Sorry? Yes, it was opposite. Okay. So we are Covenant Youth Group, and we've been going through the series uh, before. I like... What happened? What happened? Focus, focus, focus. What happened? Okay, listen. We're going through the schedule. We're going through the series of Westminster Shorter Catechism, and we're at question 53, I think. Let's read the question, and you guys read the answer of Jesus. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? What do you think it is? Which one, though? Among the ten or all ten? Yeah, so what does Jesus say? Read it. Ready, go. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself, as the law and the prophets hang on these two commandment. So what he did was he took the Ten Commandments and he summarized it in two ways. Love God and love man. So what are the Ten Commandments? Do you guys remember? What's, what's number one, Dom? Okay, read it. Yes, this is good. Uh, Darius, number two. Number three. Isaiah. Number four, Elisha. Number five, Sela. Oh, I'm sorry. Before we go to number five, these four, first four, are our vertical responsibility. What you're required to do in your relationship with God, with God. Then the last six are what you need to do with your relationship with people. So number five is, read it. Honor your, yes, honor your father and mother. Number six, Dom, number six. Do not murder. Darius, number seven. Do not commit adultery. Number eight, Isaiah. Do not steal. Number nine, do not lie. And everybody, do not covet. So these last six are the horizontal responsibilities, man to man. You want to share something? You want to share something? Okay, stay focused. This is the Ten Commandments, but oh my God, this is the most important thing in your life. Today, we're going to do number five. We're at number five. Honor your father and mother. So what is the fifth commandment? Um, let's have the guys read it. Ready, go. <laughs> okay, honor your father and mother so you can live long. What's the opposite of live long? Yeah, die early. So that's interesting that God would say, honor your father and mother so that you can live life in a long way and also bless you. But what does it require? Number 64, girls, ready? The fifth commandment requires us to respect and treat others, whether above, below, or equal to us, as their position or our relationship to them demands. So fifth re fifth the fifth commandment is not only mom and dad, but it's actually requiring you to respect everybody. Yeah, it's interesting. But it starts with your mom and dad, because they're the people that raised you. They're the first person that you met as you came into the world, mom and dad, before friends, before teachers. Let's read number 65. What does the fifth commandment forbid? Boys, ready? Yeah, so forbids being disrespectful to and not treating as their position or relationship to us demand. So it's not only parents, actually. It's actually parents connected to every other relationship in your life. Dude, this is really important. Okay. But so what's the reason? Let's read this part. What's the reason for the fifth commandment? Uh, everybody together, go. The reason for the fifth commandment is a promise of long life and prosperity 
if these glorify God and are for the good of those who obey this commandment. Wow. So God actually wants to bless you through this commandment. So what does it mean? Let's break it down. What does it mean to honor and honor them? It really is a command to respect, revere, and obey whenever necessary. Oh, and when necessary, to care for our parents. When do you need to actually care for your parents? Yeah, when they're old. Yeah, but these days, people just send them away. You know, but it's actually your responsibility as a part of our honoring. So respect, revere, and obey. So how would you define respect? Hmm? How do you define respect? Give just an example. Yeah, give an example of ways to show it or give it. <laughs> oh, okay. Recognition for what they've done. Okay. So how about a, an example of mom and dad? So if mom and dad said, I need you to take out the trash, what is a way to respect them? Say no? What? What did you say? Oh, take out the trash. Oh. If your, pa if your parents or guardians or anyone said, take out the trash. Well, I can't hear you. So what would you do? Take out the trash. So is, is respect only the action of obedience? Only that? So can I take out the trash like this? This attitude, is that respect? No. So respect is not only the action, but it's the heart, the attitude, your speech, your face, all of it. Okay, all of it is respect. Revere means to hide, put, put them in a high position. And obey means actually doing what they asked you. Okay, so all of that is included, and it's written throughout the Bible that God wants us to do all of it. But is this easy or hard? Yeah, it's hard. It's very hard. So let me ask you, if, if, you idol, if you did idol worship, the first commandment is you have no other gods and no worshiping idols, right? But if you actually did that in the Old Testament, what was the penalty? Death. You're right. <laughs> if you bowed down, and if you actually worshiped an idol, there was no 10 years in jail. It was just you would die. That's how serious it is to God. And you understand why. But what is the penalty for disobeying your parents? Getting a whipping. Yeah, you wish. Can I tell you what it is in the Old Testament? Death. It's death. <laughs> what? Wait. In the same place, like, if you worship idols, you die. If you disobey your parents, you die. That's how serious it is to God. Why? Why? Do you think God is being unreasonable? Even today, when you get a whooping, you're like, that's not fair. You, you're, you know, breaking my rights. And, and people, kids even sue their own parents these days. Okay, this is the reason they have forgotten what God considers most important. First of all, who created the family idea? Who is, whose idea is that? That's God's idea. God created the family, obviously. He created Adam and Eve with their reproductive organs, male and female, for what purpose? To get kids, <laughs> right? And not just any kids, it's their own children, right? So they would have a family. The family is the most important thing. So what's the order of the family? I found this picture and I thought it was really cool. Biblical order of the family. Think about an umbrella. There's a storm and there's rain. Here Christ, okay, God, is the ultimate overling umbrella. When we are under his control, under his submission, everything is good. God raises the husband, the man of the house, as the head of the family. And underneath it says his job is to protect the family, lead the family, 
provide for the family. That's what a man's job is as a husband. And when he has a wife, she is to comfort and teach and nurture, help the husband, love the husband, take care of the husband and the family. Okay? You see, their roles are different. But in terms of authority, she is under her husband, and that is the way that God provided it. And for children, they love parents, but they also obey parents. And all of this is within God's plan. But what happens when you come out of that? When you come out of this plan of God, what is this word, the tiny little word? It says destruction, because you're breaking the plan of God. I'll just give you a few examples. So scripture recognizes the family as the basic building block of a well-functioning society. Did you know that your family is like a mini picture of our society? What do you see today? Do you see the society working properly? No, we see crime, we see drugs, we see family dysfunction. Okay, Dom, can you read this part? Families. This part, family. Can you read it? Consistent? Okay, that's actually a fact. D Darius, read the next part. Cultures. Yeah. So uh, where does it start? It starts in the home. It starts in the home. So let's read Romans chapter 1. Okay. Well, actually, this is a passage that's connected to Romans chapter 13. Okay, Isaiah, read that. Duly. Okay, did you understand that? So look, when you're a child, you are supposed to obey your parents, which teaches you later how to obey who? Who are the next authorities that you lead, meet later? Most likely teachers. Of course, there are other relatives. But then when you grow up, get a job, you have a th the, the employers, your bosses above you, then you're learning to like, uh, respect them and obey them. Eventually, that connects to leaders of society, government leaders and others. So all of this is to help train you to eventually submit to the authority of God. So your parents were given to you okay, as a training ground for you to learn submission in a godly way. Of course, there are, there are situations where if they're telling you to do something sinful and crime-related, uh, crime that's something that we should not follow and obey. But there is a passage in Romans chapter 1 when Paul's writing down a bunch of, a list of sins, a list of sins. And in the list of those sins, what's the words in red? Can you read the words in red? Disobedient to parents. But among that is, what, what does it say? And since they did not see it fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They were full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, <coughs> disobedient to parent. It's like right in the middle of all these terrible sins. Foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless, the, what does this mean? That means when you are disobedient to your parents, you're, it's actually a spiritual issue. It's a spiritual issue that opens your heart and opens your life to all kinds of other issues in society. Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them but give approval to those who practice them. But here's the blessing. It, this command is not to bind you and make you suffocate it. It's a promise. It's a promise, a, a command with a promise. Exodus 20, the actual command, it says, honor your father and mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. So he's promising you, you long life, longevity. And how is that even possible? Because your parents are there to help you. You're guiding, they're guiding you so you don't make stupid decisions. So you're protecting yourself. 
right? Telling you to put your helmet on whenever you ride your uh, electric bike. Um, telling you to wash your hands and take a shower because there's bacteria growing all over the place. You know, telling you to, you know, do your chores or come in on an early time or go to sleep or stay away for sweets. Those things seem like burdensome things, but it's actually meant to protect you, to help you live a long life. But what does Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 4 say? Can we read that together? Ready? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. God promises prosperity and long life when you're inside of this circle of blessing, of obeying and honor your parents. That doesn't mean your parents have the right to control your life, though. Of course, in the gospel, your parents should bring you in the instruction of the Lord. But when there's a breakdown in that, it's like a breakdown in everything. And that's the sad thing today. Many of your parents did not raise you in the gospel properly, but doesn't give you an excuse to not obey them or not honor them, at least honor them. So what shall we do about it? God has to give you wisdom in every situation. It doesn't mean you need to do everything they tell you to do, okay, or follow their example, but it means because you love God, you honor God, you, you fear God and you honor God, that's why you do it, even though you don't agree with them or maybe you don't like what they're saying. The way of obedience is the way of? That's actually all the Ten Commandments. It's not meant to burden you. It's supposed to bless you because that's the way of the Lord. And here's our final conclusion. We cannot obey God on our own. To honor our parents, we need God's grace in Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm already 40-something, and my dad is 85. He's not going to tell me what to do, but sometimes when he says, I need you to do this or do that, I don't legally have an obligation to obey him. However, because I honor him, there's a way I can respond. I don't have to say, oh my goodness, dad, that's so retarded. Or, How could you say that? That's dumb. Those are all dishonorable, disrespectful words. I owe him honor and respect. Is that, what do you think about that? You have to leave? Okay, so raise your hand if you think you can work on this, honoring and respecting your parents and guardians more. You don't have to work on that? <laughs> okay I think I think we all have to work on that in our attitude in our hearts in our love and our devotion to them especially when we are asked to do things we don't want to do right and so why is this lesson important because it connects with everything in your life everything so again I wish our families and our parents were wise in how they raised us that they would honor us and also teach us responsibility and, you know, be good influences. But in case that they were not, it's still, we have to know what our role is as, as future parents. You have a God-given authority to train your children in the Lord. And when my kids were young, I had to teach them. God gave me authority to train you and discipline you. So when you disobey and I don't discipline you, I'm disobeying God. So if your parents did not discipline you properly, they're not obeying God, and they will be held accountable. But because I am disciplining my children, although it's very painful, when they understand this order, right? Christ as the umbrella over, then dads, and then moms, and then when, when they when you understand our role and our place, there's a blessing inside of that. I hope you understand that, that we would really put into practice some of these things that we're learning. Finish it with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven.
give us today, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debt. Lead us not. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is kingdom and power and glory forever. Amen. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for loving us so much even though every day we do break your commands we live selfishly we love things that are not you we have idols in our heart and then today we know that we do not honor and obey our parents and guardians the way you want us to forgive us for our selfishness our pride the way we disrespect and dishonor. But I ask today for those who are here to hear this word, that you, by your grace, teach us, Lord, how to honor our parents and grandparents, how to honor them because we love you and we fear you and because we know that it's a command with a promise. Lord, we need a humble heart for this. We need your grace for this. We need to remember that Jesus, although you are the king of kings, you humbled yourself to come into this world and obeyed the Father's will by becoming a servant, a suffering servant who took the cross for our sins. So I ask that God for our brothers and our sisters here, for Elisha, Isaiah, Dom, Darius, Sela, Grace, Isaac, myself, and Sam, that we, we would be the ones to obey this command, that we learn to honor our parents because we love you. And God, you would also bless us, bless us this week, Lord, as we put these things into practice and give us opportunities to share your love with others. And as we begin the new school year, I pray a special blessing over all CYG kids, that they will be the light in their campuses, that they would know your plan for them, they will do their very best in every single class, and that we would take this command and apl apply it in that we respect our teachers, our leaders on campuses, and that we would show respect not because they deserve it, but because you commanded it and we are your humble servants. Thank you so much for today. And now all this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.